So Patty Pimblett had Dana White on his podcast and they had some harsh words for Ariel Hawani. I hate all these journalists, especially the ones what earn off us, you know what I mean? Like Ariel Hawani in particular, like he loves earning money off fighters. Yeah. Like every decent job he's had, he's been sacked from, you know what I mean? Like, and now he's just a, a biased content creator. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? 100%. He hates on you, hates on the UFC, he even hates on me now. Yeah. And it proper annoys me oh. because he uses fighters for clicks, uses fighters to make money, and then tries to have the audacity to talk about the UFC and yourself, saying that they don't pay the fighters enough. Get your dough out, Ariel. You know what I mean? Start paying people for these interviews, what you make thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds on. He's a massive sack of is what he is. <laughs> exactly. He's but, the biggest piece of, uh, of all time. Ariel responded to Dana and Patty on the MMA Hour. Ariel says the only thing that bothered him about the clip is that they are lying about him. All right, Jesse on Fire, welcome back to the channel. So drama today, boy. Ariel responding to Patty and uh, Dana White, and it was spicy. It was a spicy exchange. Patty had a bunch of things to say about Ariel. Obviously, Dana doesn't like Ariel. Ariel has responded and he had receipts, son. He had receipts. I'm sorry. I will tell you this in advance of this video. I have nothing but love and respect for Dana. I consider him my business guru, okay? Dana is exactly what every entrepreneur who's wired like me wants to be. You get to the top of the pinnacle and you still can say whatever the f whatever you want, except for the F word in the first minute of your YouTube videos, okay? Because no one gets an exception on that. Not even me. That is the dream. So I look at Dana and I'm like, dude, this is my, he is literally my business hero. Patty is awesome, obviously. And Ariel, I have told you, has never been anything but cool to me. And every time that he gets in a beef, I'm so impressed with how he handles it, dude. This was really impressive. So I got no beef with anybody, but I do have some insight into this particular issue because A, I had heard about this before. I didn't say anything on the channel, obviously. But now that we're talking about it, we can talk about it. But B, I have very unique insight into the financials involved into this in, in what this conflict is ultimately over. Also, I'm going to be fixing these lights uh, probably today. OK, so I know the lights aren't working over there, over there. They're going to get fixed. Now, before I get into this really quick, the agreement on this channel, if this is your second video or more, you have to subscribe to the channel. It's a gentleman's agreement. It's just like, you know, we're raising money for muscular dystrophy. If you take the candy, you have to put the quarter in the jar. You know, you could just take it. You could just take it, but that would be super rude, dude. Like who just takes the candy and doesn't put the quarter in, you know? And this is, this costs less than the quarter. It's free, but for me, I work very hard. It tells the algorithm that people like my stuff and they show it to more people. So it's very helpful. It's free. If you want to watch two or more of my videos, you can watch as many as you want. You just have to subscribe. Anyway, uh, I also have to thank the, uh, the uh, sponsor for this video, which is Yo Kratom. If you're a Kratom user, I don't try to sell people on using Kratom. I never would. I never would. Except if they're trying to, you know, whatever. But I still won't talk about it like this. But if you're a Kratom user, YoKratom.com, Y-O-K-R-A-T-O-M, $60 kilograms. I like the green Mengda and the red Bally to sleep. Those are the two that I use. I love them. I just took some right now. That's why I'm in such a jovial mood. But if you are buying it from the store, you will be shocked by how much money that you save if you start using Yo Kratom. I'm talking like, I probably do, I, I mean, I don't even know how long a kilogram lasts me. Probably like, I don't know, certainly more than a month, like between me and Gabrielle. But like, I mean, you're, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars difference, massive difference. So give them a run. Anyway, okay, so this thing started uh, when Patty Pimlet and Dana White went uh, on Patty's show and Patty aired out some dirty laundry that he has with, with Ariel. You know, he said that he's a bad dude. He's profiteering off of fighters. I'm going to basically boil down everything that he said into one coherent point, which he was making, because this is how I'm going to be able to, you know, add value to this conversation. His point is that Ariel is profiteering by having fighters on his show and not paying the fighters from the money that's generated from the show. Okay. So fighters come on, people watch the show because the fighters on, but then Ariel keeps all the money, right? Ariel doesn't pay it out to the fighters. Uh, so that's, that's his basic position. I mean that like, if you really boil it down, that's what it is. And then, you know, he said he's a biased content creator, whatever that's irrelevant. Like, you know, if he's biased or not biased, that's not, that's not really where this conflict came from. All of this stemmed from Patty 
you know, being set to come on Ariel's show, Patty's manager asking Ariel to have BT Sports pay Patty for coming on the show. Ariel pushed back on that, was like, no one's ever asked for money, you know, yada, yada. And then this, and then this kind of went into the stratosphere on Twitter and stuff between the two of them where they thought Ariel tried to make them look bad over it, whatever. But at the end of the day, what his beef is, is that Ariel doesn't pay money out to fighters that come on the show. Okay, so here's the deal. Number one, the argument on the journalist side is this. You get a bunch of value as the fighter from coming on the show. This is a very sound argument, okay? Now, if you get to a certain point, which Patty certainly could say that he is at now, you get more value as the show than the fighter does from being on the show. Now, you have a very rare group of people where that's the case. Conor McGregor being one perfect example, okay? If Conor comes on your show, you know, the only way that he's benefiting from it is if he has a product that he wants to promote while being on the show. That's the only way that he's benefiting. If it's just a conversation between the two of you, for sure, the show is getting the bigger, the better end of it. If you're Patty, who knows? I mean, but you understand what I'm saying, okay? So the, the idea, though, that content creators should be paying people to come onto their show, in my opinion, based on financials, doesn't make any sense. And I'll tell you exactly why. Okay. How much money do you think that gets, gen- like how much money do you think gets generated from these videos? You know, like how much money do you think it's gen- like, okay. So as an example, the Balenciaga video that I did eight days ago, which blew up, dude, I gained 5,200 subscribers from that one video just on Jesse on fire and another 1500 on Jesse on everything from that video. Okay. Now that's an enormous, enormous growth video. Huge for a channel my size. I have what? 87, I think 87,000 or 80, yeah, 87,000 subscribers or something like that. That's insane. From one video, eight, five, you know, 5,200. Okay, so it has, uh, I believe, 270,000 views. Okay, so how much money have I made on that video? Okay, just like how much money did I make on that video? And let's just, let's even say, including, including the sponsored ad that I put on there. What would you guys guess? Okay, so it has 200, oh, I have it here, open. It has 273,000 views, okay, including the paid sponsored ad that I put on there. How much do I make between Google AdSense and that, okay? The answer is, as of right now, this is probably a day behind, so we'll round up $3,000, okay? So I made $3,000 from that video. It has 270,000 views, okay? So keep in mind, that's including this external sponsored ad. Okay, I'm not going to get into like the exact, uh, I don't want people backing into like like what Sheath pays me or whatever, but like, but at the end of the day, it's like, okay, so let's say, let's say the, let's say all of that was from Google or let's just, just whatever, let's just say it's through, and let's even say you had another ad read. So let's say it's whatever, like depending on, you know, if it's MMA hour, let's say you had 4,000 that you generated from that video. All right. Well, like, so like, is that a lot of money? You know what I mean? Like $4,000. Like, look, the reason why I do my channel the way that I do my channel, I do everything, okay? I I set the studio up. I film everything. I edit everything. I do the thumbnails. I do the uploading. I do the titles. I do the descriptions. I do everything, okay? I have no help whatsoever, none. Not a single person helps me with anything. And the reason for that is because I don't want to pay anybody, okay? It was hard learning all this shit. It was really fucking hard but I learned all of it. Okay. And all these other shows that you see, the majority of them are not one person shows. Okay. MMA guru is a one person show. I would imagine, but like some of like the bigger shows, they all, I mean, like there's no, I mean, Ariel shows definitely not a, I mean, he, well, that's the thing. I'll come back to that in a second. So that's the money that gets generated through YouTube. So like, if it's one of these shows that has like one person to pay, okay, so let's say you have to pay $500 to like your staff, like whatever, to produce the show. Like the, the, the fighter's like, yeah, I want $1,000 of that. You know what I mean? It's like, what are we talking about? Dude, this is like, it's not, it's not real money. You know what I mean? Or like, oh, I want $500 for coming on. Is that what we're talking about? $500? You know what I mean? Like this, like, it's just not that much money. So like, what are we talking about? This is not that much money. Now, it's different if you've got like an exclusive interview with someone that's going to get a bill. Like as an example, when Sammy Gravano, okay, I don't know if you guys know this. I know Sammy the Bull. We did a, I actually, I did two different things with Sammy the Bull and we hung out with them like external, like out of, you know, not just podcasting. We hung out with their family. 
But like I did two separate shoots with Sammy the Bull. And I talked to him about this. This is before, this is when he was just barely starting YouTube, which is how I got in there, obviously. Uh, I think he had like 18,000 subscribers when I, when I got a hold of his son. Anyway, so, so they didn't really know the financials of YouTube yet, but he had done an exclusive interview with uh, Patrick from Valuetainment when he first got out of prison, his very first exclusive interview. And that got 10, 10 to 15 million views. And so when we were rapping out about it, I was like, man, I'm like, so I'm like, so do you get, I asked him, I was like, so do you get a piece of that or what? He's like, he's all, no, nah. he's like, I was just, you know, went on for you. I'm like, he's like, why? How, you know, he's like, Patrick's not going to share that. I'm like, he made a lot of dough on that dude. He's all, how much? I was like 60 grand. And he looked at me, he's like 60 grand. I was like 60 grand, dude. Yeah. About five to $6,000 per million views. And maybe even more than that. Cause there's a really long interview that like people probably watched the majority of it could have been more than that. And he was like, you could just see, he's like, Whoa. And that's like, and that's one of those things that that was a guarantee that Sammy's initial interview after coming out was going to do numbers like that. That's different. Okay. But just like your average run of the mill fighter going on the MMA hour, like, what are we talking about? Dude, it's not that much money. It's just not that much money. It's not that much money, you know? So again, and I don't, and this is the thing. I don't, I don't think, I don't think these guys know that. Like, this is what I, because I've just recently been paying attention to the numbers of people talking about money on these channels. And I'm like, dude, do, do these guys like, I don't feel like anyone understands the actual financials of these channels. Because like, like I heard, I heard Luke Thomas talking about how morning combat loses money and he's on, but, and that he's, uh, he's a contracted person there. Like it's a contract. So he doesn't even know what they make on the back end, right? It doesn't sound like, I mean, I don't know why he would know that if he's just contracted to be there and then film. These are like shows and Ariel, same thing. Ariel doesn't make anything different based on the views. Vox Media does that, right? Like, so Vox Media is putting all the money forward. They're filming, they're doing this, whatever. And then like that now in the, in their cases, they have a podcast also where they're reading ads. So there's probably more money, but not that much more. You know what I mean? Not that much more, a few thousand dollars more, maybe. So like, again, it's like, uh, there are just very few people who even know the numbers of this thing. Like Cejudo has a new, you know, relatively small operation. I think that he has one guy from ESPN who's like helping like, uh, who left ESPN, moved to Arizona, is helping him produce and edit and all that stuff. It's still a two man operation, dude. Like, it's like, it's just not that much money. So the idea that you're going to pay guys to come on I don't know. It seems kind of ridiculous to me because it's just not enough money. Like, what the fuck are we talking? You really going to bang a guy for 500 bucks? You know, a thousand. So I'll come on, but I want a thousand dollars. It's like, really? You know, and that's for a big show that would get a quarter million views. You know what I mean? I don't know. Anywho. So I don't think that it's super reasonable to be asking for money just because of how little money is actually generated by the appearances. That's all I'm saying. Okay. But the other side of this story was this had to do with how this whole thing unfolded. And I think that this was an understandable misunderstanding, which was, you know, Graham, uh, I think his name's Graham, who is uh, who's Patty's manager. You know, he asked Ariel to ask BT Sports about what budget they have, whatever. Like, I'm sure he doesn't have any idea. He doesn't know. You know what I mean? Like, I guarantee you, if you were like, hey, OK, so check it out, Graham. So here's the deal for his appearance we're probably going to make a total of five grand, you know, probably gonna make a total of five grand, you know, I mean, and, and we have to pay our staff two grand. So there's, there's going to be about $3,000 of profit. All right. We'll take $1,500. It's like, really? You know what I mean? Like, okay, well, I mean, we could just have this person on who's not going to charge us and you know, we might get a few less views, but we don't have to pay him $1,500. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But nonetheless, uh, it turned into like a Twitter war back in the thing. And like, and Patty had people hammering him on Twitter based on something that Ariel said that Ariel didn't actually say his name. And so they like had to like, you know, but I, all honesty, Ariel didn't do anything wrong. You know, I think Ariel's a little bit sensitive, you know, like when I was like, he's reading out his text messages about how this all went down. And, you know, I mean, I think, I think Ariel accidentally escalated it, you know, where like everything Ariel said was true. Like Ariel was like that, what they said, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. He had all the receipts and the text messages, but when he went through the actual conversation around him coming on and potentially getting paid and all that stuff, just the way he's reading his own responses, 
he, in my opinion, escalated it a little bit without it being necessary. You know, like, uh, like he took it, he like took it personal that they were asking him for money versus just being like, dude, look, man, like BT, I mean, we don't have like BT sports doesn't have any budget for paying guys. Like I've never, like we've never had anyone ask for that. That's just, that's not how we do things. If, if he's got paid gigs, then, you know, take the paid gigs, but whatever. Like he acted like he was like personally like being attacked or something. But, but nonetheless, like I said, Ariel had all their, and, and talking about Dana and this is ridiculous. Dana does not like Ariel. End of story. You know what I mean? There's nothing new here. Dana just let Patty talk about it and he just let him go and then said he's a piece of shit. And that was basically his contribution. <laughs> so there's nothing really to add there. Anyway, I love you guys. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. Peace.